We heard a high-pitched frequency sound, and we saw a flash and a craft. Two beings were hopping along. They weren't touching the ground, they were almost mimicking us. On September the 16th, 1994, Emily Trim was one of 62 children at Zimbabwe's aerial school who claimed to witness an alien visit. The elementary students said they saw three mysterious flashes of light overhead. When this mesmerizing blinking stopped, it became clear that these were actually flying objects. The UFOs landed in a wooded area beside the school, and two thin, meter-tall humanoids materialized on its roof. In the two decades since the incident, experts from all over the world have tried and failed to debunk the sighting, leaving many with no doubts that it actually happened. According to witnesses, the first humanoid was wearing an ill-fitting black suit. He had enormous eyes, a scrawny neck and lank black hair. He was soon joined by another similar looking creature. The figures walked towards the children as if in a daze. When they noticed the kids, they returned to the spaceship and disappeared. Some witnesses said the aliens warned them about the devastating impact of human activity on Earth's natural resources before leaving. This information was delivered telepathically. What makes this story especially remarkable is the fact that all the children told the same version of events. Eerily, when the school's headmaster, Colin Mackey, selected 35 children to draw what they had witnessed, they all depicted the same scene. Given how soon after the incident this took place, it is significant that the children recalled the event almost identically. One terrified child told investigators, I swear by every hair on my head and the whole Bible that I am telling the truth. Curiously, Zimbabwe had experienced its first reported mass UFO sighting earlier that very week. Two days before the incident, thousands of people across Zimbabwe claimed they had seen a UFO hurtling across the sky. Neither UFOs nor aliens exist in Zimbabwe's national culture. The sighting cannot therefore be easily explained as an episode of mass hysteria. Nor can the school sighting, according to medical experts. Harvard Medical School psychiatry professor John Mack traveled to Zimbabwe to interview the children who witnessed the incident. Professor Mack, a Pulitzer Prize winning biographer and highly respected psychiatrist, was convinced they were telling the truth. The BBC sent a camera crew to interview the children. Tim Leach, director of the BBC Zimbabwe Bureau at the time, said that hearing the testimonies completely changed his perspective on life and the universe. Describing its transformational effect, he said, I wouldn't change it for the world. It is also interesting that the 62 children have stood by their statements into adulthood. They are not profiting from standing by their claims, but have nonetheless maintained their story. However, Many respected medical professionals question the authenticity of Professor Mack's alien research. This includes senior staff at Harvard Medical School. Suspicion over his findings eventually led to anonymous faculty members secretly investigating his work. This was the first time in the university's history that a tenured professor had been under investigation. According to journalist William H. Honan, the result was a highly critical report. Although Mack retained his job, he lost considerable professional respect for his work on UFO sightings and alien abductions. Much of this skepticism comes down to the absence of proof for aliens or UFOs. Besides witness statements, there is no proof that the Earth has ever received an extraterrestrial visit. In 2000, a leaked British Ministry of Defence report titled Unidentified Aerial Phenomena in the UK concluded that suspected UFO incidents are almost certainly attributable to physical, electrical and magnetic phenomena in the atmosphere, mesosphere and ionosphere. They appear to originate due to more than one set of weather and electrically charged conditions and are observed so infrequently as to make them unique to the majority of observers. There have been no scientific developments since the report's release to suggest otherwise. The same is true for alien life itself. 
In 2016, a study conducted at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics concluded that there is a high probability that intelligent aliens might not exist for another trillion years. Scientist and the report's lead author, Avi Loeb, explained that humans may actually be an anomaly in the universe, as we cannot be certain that other intelligent life exists. Four days after the event in 1994, a search team arrived at the site looking for proof of the alien visit. Despite extensive searching, nothing unusual was found at the scene. Furthermore, teachers at the school said in interviews that there were around 250 children playing outside at the scene of the landing. The 62 children who witnessed the incident are outnumbered by those who didn't. This discrepancy strongly suggests that whatever occurred in the playground that day was not as tangible as it first seemed. Some aspects of the Zimbabwe UFO incident and its aftermath defy logical explanation. However, there is no hard proof it ever took place, and scientists now suggest intelligent alien life may not even exist yet. All the same, the Zimbabwe incident remains compelling because of the sheer number of witnesses. It also remains shrouded in mystery.